What distinguishes an intellectual from someone who is not? An intellectual pays more attention to how they think than what they think about things. When someone tells them that the Earth circles the Sun, instead of accepting the statement blindly, an intellectual asks, how do we know that? An intellectual gets excited when they find flaws in their thinking, because the discovery of each flaw makes them a better thinker. For centuries, our ancestors believed that there is a heaven above and earth below, that the lightning is created by Zeus and storms are stirred by the anger of Poseidon. That's what they thought, but that wasn't how the world worked. This dichotomy between what and how, especially when it comes to our way of thinking, always interested me and it was one of the central topics of discussion in a talk that I attended last week. It was a talk given by the Italian physicist Carlo Rovelli at the British Library. Rovelli's talk was dedicated to the ancient Greek polymath Anaximander, who is credited with creating the first known map of the world. He was a student of Thales, who is considered to be the father of Western philosophy. Anaximander had some disagreements with his teacher. Anaximander, in contrast to Thales, believed that our universe is eternal and was not created by gods. All these achievements come to nothing when we realize that Anaximander gave to, gifted us something bigger than that. He gifted us the nature of scientific way of thinking. He was one of the first who asked how does nature work instead of accepting ready-made, groundless facts given by priests or kings. Instead of claiming that Iris, the Greek goddess of rainbow and moisture on earth, is responsible for rain, Anaximander gathered evidence to show how rain appears through the evaporation of water on earth and then condensation of it in the air. He was also one of the first astronomers in history. He observed how stars move in the sky and how the sun is replaced by the moon every day and night. And this led him to some questions, as intellectuals often do. They start to question what they observe. He believed that the assumption that there is heaven above and earth below is flawed. Instead, Anaximander suggested that we are all standing on a rock that is suspended in the void. And this was just a revolutionary but also crazy idea for his contemporaries. The interesting thing is that Anaximander didn't want to convince his contemporaries just by his authority. He convinced them by the evidence that he provided to them. The essence of his message to his contemporaries was what you think is wrong Wrong because how you think is flawed. Anaximander, as a true intellectual, demanded that every statement must be supported by evidence. Rovelli repeated several times during his talk that this was one of the greatest revolutions that happened in human history, that it changed the trajectory of our civilization, that it invented the nature of scientific way of thinking, but it also shook the positions of power and authority, because for centuries kings and priests derived and based their authority on divine, whilst intellectuals now, after Anaximander, based their reputation on reason and evidence. And even 400 years after Anaximander, the great philosopher and statesman Cicero, even he couldn't grasp how could um, Anaximander, the student of the great uh, philosopher Thales, question his teacher. Anaximander showed that your teacher could be wrong if his way of thinking was flawed. Anaximander taught us that if the way your teacher thinks is flawed, then there is no authority to redeem them. As Christopher Hitchens once said, that what can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence as well. To conclude this video, I would like to mention one last thought that Rovelli mentioned in his talk. He said that there were three 
periods in our human history when we could lose completely the scientific way of thinking that Anaximander gifted us. The first time when this happened was when Roman Empire expanded and to be honest Roman conquerors and emperors weren't fond of intellectuals either. Intellectuals often questioned their authority. They questioned the divine origin of their power. The second time when it happened was with the rise and spread of Christianity and its dogmatism. That was also a moment when we could lose all those ideas by Anaximander and his followers. The third and the final time when we could completely lose this was with the rise of enlightenment in the 17th century. Many enlightenment thinkers back then had some sort of arrogance as well. They believed that they can give the final answers to all the greatest questions on earth if they applied reason. But reason without philosophy, without the open-mindedness, without scientific thinking becomes a dogma. It is important to, to never forget that science and scientific way of thinking is a constant discovery and there can be no final answers to the great questions in life. Rovelli quoted Newton when he said that, I know not how I seem to others, but to myself I am but a small child wandering upon the vast shores of knowledge, every now and then finding a small bright pebble to content myself with, while the vast ocean of undiscovered truth lay before me. There can be no final answers to the greatest questions in life, in the eyes of Rovelli. The ocean of knowledge is way too vast and we will always remain her wandering children.